Welcome back, everybody. I uh, hope you had a good coffee break. Um, I'm going to introduce you to SAP on Azure and um, talk a bit around ERP, uh, whether it's SAP or any of the other ERPs on Azure and the benefits of using the products and uh, services that are in the Azure um, environment. Um, sorry. Why are we going the wrong way? Sorry. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a technical problem here. Just want to try and get back to where we are. So our strategy is around data. It's not around infrastructure, but it's around data. Data is actually the commodity that brings an outcome. And with the amount of devices that are growing and the network capabilities, whether we're talking narrowband IoT or 5G, we're seeing a lot more data coming into the environments. Now, the thing is, what do you do with that data? You need to get business outcomes from it. So that is where Vodacom Business's strategy is, holding the data and providing insights and value to our customers on that data. My role within Vodacom is to provide customers with uh, SAP services. So we have a number of customers on our cloud platforms, and I have a technical team of basis uh, engineers that support the customers. So we support customers from the operating system, database, as well as the SAP software using the basis components of SAP. Um, our journey, we've been in this game for about six years now, providing SAP services in the cloud. Uh, we provide a full suite of services, so from the actual start of the journey where we come and do the cloud assessments through to running and operating your systems and enhancing them for customers. So we've got a, a full suite of products in there. We understand that each customer is unique, so our service models are built around the customer's actual needs. Where if you're a 24-7 operating customer, we know that we can't just patch you or bring down your systems at any time. We've got to work with you, arrange your service windows according to your company's specific needs. So we don't believe there's a one service fits all. And we customize our services by working with customers and making sure that we fulfill your operational requirements. So, the digital platform, and I think what we're sitting at today, we were talking earlier about remote working and what's happening due to this virus. And I think when we look at the digital platform, the digital core, and how people are now gonna need to more than ever understand customers, understand the operations, understand your products. Um, if you have a look at what's happening, I've got two of my children live in, in Sydney in Australia. And the, outs, the stock outs in the shops are horrendous. You've seen the toilet paper episodes that have been out there, but over and above that, it's now getting down to food and commodities that are necessary that um, are becoming a problem. So this is when data becomes more and more important and that you get the value of this data um, and manage to, to get efficiencies in your operations. And we're going to see, I presume, a lot more machine learning and AI coming out of where we are at the moment, and um, that we're going to learn a lot from this tragic place where we're at currently with the virus. So why Azure for SAP applications? JK spoke earlier about the infrastructure, and I'm not going to go over that again, but there's a wealth of, of infrastructure for each and every application and in the SAP stack. Um, Microsoft has a very strong SAP relationship, and over on top of that is the platforms with the insights that I'll touch on a bit, bit more. So what do customers want from cloud? So obviously scalability. You want at the end of the month, when you're doing your month-end processes, that you have optimal compute available, your systems are working as fast as possible. Availability being critical, that if you are a multinational with multiple um, operations around the world, that you can place workloads where they need to be close to your users or close to your customers. Performance is a guarantee. You've, you've got to be able to have uptime all of the time. And again, management. So as SAP and uh, Microsoft both use these platforms, 
There's a lot of automation of the scripts and tooling that has been built by these companies, making your uh, work effort a lot easier and a lot more efficient. So what have we seen with customers? I mean, with, in the development and test environments and training environments for that, that you can get between a 45, 40 to 75% saving on your TCO. And that's obvious. I mean, if you currently leave these mach machines running all the time, it's pointless. So switching these machines off when you don't need them and bringing them up um, when they need it, getting, getting that availability. Disaster recovery, I think, you know, JK spoke about it earlier, but the fact that using Azure, you're able to reprovision in minutes and not in weeks or days. Uh, you back up and archiving, these storage costs being 60% savings for, for you. So also, you cannot get cheaper Windows servers than coming from Microsoft itself. So in essence, all customers gain a lot of benefits from moving into the cloud, into Azure, and being able to optimize their costs on the platforms. So Azure management, as SAP um, is, is the ERP of choice within uh, Microsoft, obviously they've got a lot of tooling, they've learned a lot, they've built things like um, blueprints, they've got cost management tools to optimize the infrastructure, and also the access based, uh, role-based access control using single sign-on and AD and all those kind of products from Microsoft. Monitoring we touched about, but there's Azure monitoring, Azure log analytics, various tools that are looking from the actual infrastructure itself right through the software and checking on the optimization of that. Automation, again, how to bring up that infrastructure automatically, switch it off automatically, using pre-built scripts that are that have been used and being used globally. And then data protection. Again, JK spoke around Sentinel and the tools that are that are used in the platform, I'll touch a bit on that now. But data protection being key on every CIO and IT manager's um, schedule. The Azure Monitor, as I spoke, um, looks at SAP HANA, which um, obviously you want HANA working as optimal as possible. That's why you've implemented it. So Microsoft has built specific reporting and monitoring tools that look at HANA and get that you get your optimal HANA um, use. Security, I touched, I said that it's you know the key um, concern of everybody, especially security in the cloud. But when you have a look at the whole range of products that Microsoft brings within the Azure environment, from identity and access management, data protection, network security, threat protection, and the fact that you can build out your own SIEM using Azure Sentinel. Nobody else has such a comprehensive security stack right across your SAP landscape. So we definitely believe Azure security being you know, fully comprehensive and, and able to support all of your needs. Again, this is a repeat slide, but it highlights that you can go anywhere in the world and, and you've got the certifications to satisfy local governance requirements uh, with data protection and security. And this being a major factor for SAP customers who use the ERPs as their core business um, solutions. So why Microsoft and SAP? I mean, they've been working together for over 25 years integrating SAP and Microsoft, where you can use Microsoft projects integrated to the SAP um, project system. You can integrate Excel between um, SAP and, and your desktop. So they've worked together for a long, long time and understand each other. They're also working on co-innovation currently with cloud platforms and what you're gonna do within Leonardo and making these offerings seamless between both companies and both uh, solutions. So Microsoft uses SAP themselves, and I think this obviously is where it stands for us. They've, got, they've built the Azure platforms to suit their ERP and HR systems, all their SAP systems that they had. They've migrated 50 terabytes of data into Azure, which is a substantial amount of data that they're operating and managing. Um, for them. We all know how big Microsoft is. These um, employees are working around the globe 
on these Azure systems. So again, if Microsoft is using Azure to run their SAP environments, I think there's no reason why SAP customers should not be taking that choice also. Data custodian again, the ability to look at multiple clouds, multiple, all the Azure clouds and where you're looking, you, you're managing all of your applications, looking at data governance, audit reporting, which is critical to all of us, traceability of who's done what, bringing together SAP's GRC suite, as well as Azure's uh, cloud and security um, components. So bringing those two together is also quite a, um, a great sign of, of, of the, the two companies working together to provide solutions. So I'm gonna talk a bit about how Vodacom itself actually uses SAP. Um, we're a massive user, we all use it for our SAP finance, our HR and payroll is on it, we use success factors, Concur. So we've a large global SAP customer. In November last year, we as an organization globally moved on to SAP HANA. So we've got this experience. Not only do we operate it, we run it. Our business is um, obviously critical that, that SAP works for us. And this aligns also to our IoT strategy. I mentioned in the opening that we've just connected over 100 million devices. With that, we're covering multiple industries where we're providing from healthcare, manufacturing, agriculture, all the connectivity and um, devices, bringing these IoT um, platforms into place ourselves. So what we have in Vodacom, sorry, and, and using the, the partnership with SAP, Leonardo, and bringing them intelligent edge, bringing Microsoft's tooling and AI, ML capabilities into our own solutions. So what we had was an issue. We, we managed 13,000 base stations around the company, around the country. Uh, you've heard around batteries being stolen from these base stations. We also naturally have to cool these systems and they're very remote. So how do we have eyes on the base stations, making sure they are operationally operating correctly and providing our customers with the services that they buy from us? So within a base station, there's multiple electronic components, whether it's actual network hardware, air conditioning, monitoring, security, power. It's, it's a mini station that's sitting out there with all these connected things. So we brought them all together working with IoT.next to bring the data together. And that way we can get remote monitoring across the country. We can see our, our towers, we understand how they're operating. And we look at how we can optimize them, especially with the cost of power, for instance, today. Why do you want air conditions running when the temperature is only 20 degrees and the kit only has to operate at 25 degrees? Switch it off, switch it off remotely. Those were the capabilities we built in. So what we've done is combining the IoT devices, bringing them into SAP's asset central um, uh, asset management solution, and then starting to add AI components on that and machine learning components that we understand the behavior of all of these parts of a base station. With that, when we need a service requirement, need to call a technician out to go to the field, we're able to identify what component has failed in the actual base station from its digital twin. We're able to create an order on Ariba to get the spare parts from the suppliers. And we also provide a works order to the field technician using field gloss that they can go out to the actual station and correct it. So we've integrated those SAP modules. We've used the um, Leonardo platform. We're taking the analytics through the Azure anal analytics components to provide these insights and in the management of these, of these uh, pay stations. SAP on Azure, I mean, you just look at that customer list out there and, and they're massive global customers in every single industry. So we firmly believe that no matter what industry you're in, there is a solution for you on Azure and with your SAP uh, solution on Azure. The evolution, so obviously starting with your core, you want availability, you want performance, you want security, you want all the stuff that I've spoken about earlier, the basics of keeping your ERP running. But then you start getting the tools that you can actually transform your business, that you can actually ingest all this data, whether it's coming from SAP or other systems that um, 
you're able to, oh, sorry, too many clicks again. But you're able to take those tools, create big data lakes, use the data to get insights, and then integrate them also into tools that um, we use all the day. LinkedIn, for instance. What are we doing with the analytics in LinkedIn? What happens when we're posting jobs? What are people trending about? All of these different aspects that you can go and extend the reach of your business to places you've never gone. And the really cool thing is you're not now buying the software, having to own it for long periods of time. You can go on, use it for what you actually wanted, and then switch it off afterwards. So you're getting your results without having to have this asset base of software that is not being used all of the time. So with Azure Factory, it's both SAP, non-SAP data. You're able to ingest that data, clean it, make sense of it, store it, and then transform it into the presentation layers that you need and model it, send it to people, whether it's integrated to applications, or that you start using it to automate systems like we have done with, with our platform and our base station management. So again, just to reiterate and close off on this, why Azure for SAP workloads? Because SAP themselves run their systems on Azure, as well as Microsoft running their SAP systems of Azure. You know that these two companies working together, they, you're getting a platform that is suited for your actual ERP or your SAP solution. Um, the most scale on HANA and across all regions. Remember, that Microsoft is the only cloud provider that is actually using SAP themselves and using it on their platform. So that gives us a great uh, feeling there. And then security. Again, it's robust security. You're not buying components all over the place. You're getting security from the actual infrastructure all the way up into your SAP uh, solution to, to protect you. So at the moment, we're going through the Embrace program with Microsoft. And what that is is working together, SAP, Microsoft, and partners like ourselves to actually assist customers moving from their traditional ERPs to move to S4HANA. So on that, if you are interested, please reach out to us later. We'll come together with Microsoft and SAP and bring you a solution that really makes sense for you, both cost efficiently wise, as well as enhancing your business with the cap capabilities of S4HANA. So let's get, this is a call to action. Come talk to us about optimizing your landscapes. Let's look at the migration capabilities that we've got and also how the ecosystem will work in your, in your favor. And also talk to us about how we've innovated as a local and a global company using both SAP, Microsoft Azure to give business insights and, and to run our businesses. So thank you very much for your time today. We're going to quickly change over to Ian, who's going to talk to you now about Azure Stack. And this is great for, for customers that are looking to get the power capability of Microsoft Azure, but still operate it within their own data centers. Thank you very much, everyone.